Jewish people all over the world will gather together tonight in synagogues for the stirring melody of Kol Nidre. It's something that we all remember from our childhood. It's the biggest moment of the year. Imagine a group of rabbis sitting down and trying to decide, we have a captive audience, one night of the year where we know the whole Jewish world is listening. What should we utilize that hour for? How should we maximize that time? Well, you might come up with a lot of ideas. It'd be an interesting thing to discuss at your Shabbat table. But one thing's almost certain. I doubt any one of you would say, hey, I got it. Let's all get together at that one moment, prime time, Jewish prime time, and gather together and go through a Aramaic ancient formula of nullifying our vows and our oaths and our commitments. Really? That's what the rabbis decided to do with that one precious moment when all the Jewish people are listening. Kol Nidre, what is Kol Nidre? It's a nullification. We verbally nullify any vows that we may have taken throughout the year, any oaths or any promises. And besides, it's a weird thing to do to get up on Yom Kippur right before we're about to spend the whole day praying to Hashem, using our words to pray to Hashem and say, by the way, Hashem, God, our words are meaningless. All my promises, I was crossing my fingers. I take them back. I nullify them. All my commitments, they're gone. Forget it as if they were never made. What is going on with Kol Nidre? The melody is beautiful. It's stirring. It's emotional. But do we think about what it means? So I wanted to share a thought that I had this year about this very important moment. And I think it's the perfect kickoff into into Yom Kippur. You see, every time you buy a piece of technology, it comes with default settings. Default settings, factory settings, that's what the manufacturers put into the program to make it work effectively and efficiently. And you can change the settings, probably never do, I never do. But guess what? We human beings, we also come with default settings. You know what those default settings are? They're like promises or oaths. Every time this happens, I swear I'm gonna react like this. Every time my spouse, disrespects me, I promise I'm going to get angry. Or I swear that I'm going to become passive aggressive or check out. Every time my child speaks disrespectfully to me, I swear I'm going to yell at that child. Or I promise that I'm going to lose my cool or lose my control. We have all these promises. They're called immediate reactions. They're called responses. These are our default settings. And we think that we don't have control over these default settings. But guess what? We do. We have total control over them. The great philosopher, psychologist Viktor Frankl once wrote that there is something that exists between, this is not a direct quote, between impulse and reaction. There's a moment between impulse and reaction, between stimulus and reaction. And what is it that exists between stimulus and reaction? It's that moment of choice. It's that moment where we can decide how we want to react to a situation. And that moment is where our strength, our free will, and our great humanness exists. We don't have to respond to situations exactly as we always have. Just because until now I'm 52 years old, I've always responded to the situation. And when I, someone cuts me off, I honk at them, I flash my lights at them. I have my responses, but I'm not obligated to respond that way. Even though I've made promises to myself without realizing it, without my awareness, I promise a long time ago that when this happens, I'll respond this way. And when this happens, I'm going to do this. But guess what? We stand up on Yom Kippur as we're going deep into the period, the final moments of tshuva, and we nullify our vows, and we remove those commitments and those promises that we made to ourselves, that I have to be like this, and I'm going to be like this. We liberate ourselves. We are freeing ourselves from all of the default settings that we carry around with us. And then we can go into Yom Kippur, and then we can do tshuva, and then we can work on the things that we want to work on and come out different human beings. There's a story that they tell about an eagle. An eagle that fell from the sky as a little tiny baby and a chicken farmer found this eagle and raised the eagle among his chickens. And you know what happened to this chicken, this eagle? The eagle thought he was a chicken 
and he lived his whole life on the ground, pecking and moving around, walking around, not flying, not going anywhere. And one day he saw something flying in the sky. It was the eagle. He says, wow, what's that? And the other chicken says, oh, that's the king of the sky. That's the eagle. He can fly in the heavens. And the eagle said, wow, that's incredible. I want to fly in the heavens. And the other chicken said, no, 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 you can't fly in the heavens. You're a chicken. You know how the story ends? The chicken dies. The eagle dies thinking he's a chicken. My friends, my dear, dear friends, part of our community together, we want to soar like an eagle. We want to soar to the heavens. We want to reach our potential. Sometimes we get stuck thinking that we're chickens, but we're not chickens. We're eagles. We have infinite potential within us. And we got to take that potential and nullify all those things and release ourselves of all those false vows and commitments that hold us back and become the people that we have the potential to be. And that's what Kol Nidre is all about. Now go and enjoy and take advantage of it. And I'm wishing everybody a Gemar Tov. You should be signed and sealed in the Book of Life. Shana Tovah.